inquisitive mind and big time ability to take chances, right? We don't go through life saying, I can't do that because I haven't done it, right? We say, I haven't done it, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll take a shot at it. Great job. Thank you. Good picture again. Good picture. Come on up. When I got into public relations first, um, I had no intention of going into PR at all. When I was growing up, I actually wanted to be a receptionist telephonist. I thought that was the coolest job in the world. I had an aunt who was a receptionist telephonist. You know, somebody who says, Good morning, Bialy Stecker Bloom. Let me I help you. Let me connect you. Good morning, Bialy Stecker Bloom. I thought this was so super groovy. And it took years for me to figure out that actually what was super groovy about her was that she was single, she earned a lot of money, and she travelled a lot. And that was what I aspired to. It wasn't the, uh, the, the receptionist telephonist, it was, I like her lifestyle. That's what I'm after. I got into public relations because I was always involved in community groups. I had been appointed as PRO and I really enjoyed it. I was sending in what I called press releases, but they were long letters. You know, the press releases began with, hello, Aina, here's a situation that I wonder could you actually oblige me and cover this in the newspaper, and would tell an entire story. And the newspapers were great, they always covered it. And it was primarily newspapers at the time, now I've gone back 30 years, it was primarily newspapers that covered the stories. And the first PR course by night happened in, uh, when did I set up the first business? 80, 79, 81. So it happened about 1979, 1980. And I thought, that'd be interesting. I'd be interested in learning how PR people actually do it so that I can promote all these organizations that I'm involved in. So I watch people, I watch the news, and I don't actually pick up on the news. I pick up on why are they saying that now? Why did I choose that location to stand in to actually say, why are they commenting at all? Why did they decide, why do they want to jump up and down and be heard? Why didn't they just stay under the radar? Everything is analyzed from PR point of view. I just thoroughly enjoy it. So I started studying PR and at the end of the first year, they asked us to write a set of proposals for a company that we knew. And they specifically said, you should deal with a company that you know because it's very hard to get a company to open up and give you loads of information. But if they know you, they'll tell you everything and you'll be able to write really good proposals and you'll do well. And I thought, yeah, that's okay, but everybody in the room is being paid for by their company or like, I have a great respect for my own money. I love squandering it, but I know it's my money. But I was like, yeah, I'm the only person, one of the few people who's actually paying for myself. I'm not sure if I'm getting like real world cutting edge stuff or am I getting theory? And people would say, yeah, that's lovely, you know, well done and off you go, but really not good stuff. So I talked my way into a company that didn't know me. And I told the guy that I would spend six weeks researching his company. He did a base in Dublin, in Cork, in Galway, and some are Clare, I think, Ennis in County Clare. And I said to him, I'd spend six weeks researching the company. I would design a set of PR proposals at the end of it. And what I wanted was a critical commercial analysis. I would sit in front of him and he could do anything he liked with the proposals. He could bend them, he could implement them, he could steal the best ideas out of them, I didn't care. But I wanted somebody to tell me was I in the real world and somebody actually pay money for this. When I went in, with hindsight, he was the perfect guy to deal with because his face never changed. You could literally tell him, you know, your wife has just given birth to your first child and you go, uh-huh, <laughs> nothing. Uh, there's a guy outside and he just poured petrol all over your beam and set it on fire. Uh-huh. No reaction. He went through everything. So where did you find this? Who did you talk to? How did you research that? No reaction. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, okay, well this is like a lead balloon, but at least I'm learning something. And at the end of it all he said, are you prepared to implement it? And I had no intention of going into PR. But you know when you, you, sort of, you hear that apple dropping onto your lap? It's like, hmm, interesting. What <coughs> So I said, yes, but I'm actually setting up at the moment and it'll be six to eight weeks before I can take the contract on. And he said, that's fine. Come back and let me know what you're set up. And I remember <coughs> he hardly paid for it at all, but from my point of view, it was brilliant. Because it meant that I came out, I set up my PR consultancy, and in eight weeks, I started with my first client, which was absolutely marvelous. And I'm, I became totally and utterly addicted to PR. I just, I loved everything to do with communication. So, so I was working in PR, and while I was working in PR, they invited me to join the Public Relations Institute uh, Central Council. When I joined that, they invited me to become the chair of their education council. And at the time, the education council, I started lecturing, which I thought was almighty fun. Because I'd only just graduated like, what, five years before? I was like, just imagine, five years ago, sitting there, and now I'm talking, and everybody's going, wow, she knows her chickens. <laughs> no. But anyway, I started that, and then I realized 
that actually there's nobody, there is no other course you could do. There was no other course in Ireland you could do except this one course that I was doing. If you were doing it on a part-time basis, and you could only do it in Dublin, nobody else is teaching public relations. So I formed the Irish Academy of Public Relations. We were 25 years old last August. What if you're not in Ireland? What if you're somewhere else in the world? How do you study with us? And we're beginning to get to the world domination now. Well, it should be online. It actually starts as a distance, it's now become online. So we started teaching online. And then we started teaching online and it was, well, not everybody speaks English. So why are we only teaching in English? So we now teach in English, Russian, Polish, Spanish, French, and Arabic. Um, it's fascinating, the different takes of different people. So anyway, that's what we do on the, the teaching side. On the PR side, um, and the only PR that I continue to do is crisis PR, uh, because I absolutely love it. Um, I love that, you know, you must get me out of this doo-doo now, it's like, I'm your girl. Mm. Cancel everything, I'm busy. 